Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott. And today I'm going to show you how you can create a hand-drawn wooden beam in Blender 2.8. So this is a texture painting tutorial and it's designed to give you an insight into how you can create stylized objects. And with these objects you can then build up buildings or you can take the skills you've learnt and use it to create one big object. I'm currently working on a project for Atlas Empires where I'm building up different sets of buildings using modules, which you can see along here. So today I'm going to be modeling a wooden beam just like this. This tutorial is purely about painting techniques and not so much about the setup. If you need details about the setup, then look at my introductory videos, courses and quick start guide, all the links in the description. And you can check out the progress for the game following the links there as well. So of course I've already set up my texture and unwrapped this and unwrapped all my objects. So I'll select on the object that I'm texturing now, go to texture paint mode, isolate that with forward slash on my numpad, turn my brush on. If you can't see these tools, then you need to make sure you've got this workspace ticked and just check my blend mode is set to mix. I've got a very light strength and I've got a color palette which I've got from my other objects here. In fact, sometimes to start off with, I take myself out of isolation mode so I can see the other objects when I'm painting. I might actually do that in this case as well. Now I've already filled my object with a sort of yellowy, browny color, fairly light brown. You can do that when you add the texture or just use the fill brush. So let's get a bit of the other colors in there and just streak across like this to start with. Don't worry if it's really rough. A few other different colors in there. Make sure you're getting the underside as well, even though you can't see it. And you're just trying to match the other colors so that there's consistency in your scene. Turn my strength up just a touch. Still a little bit orangey at the moment. But I'm just randomly going over my object with those colors, trying to match the other beams and pieces of wood. Now wood picks up reflections from different places, so varying your color is a good idea. I might go across to the red a little bit, bring my brush size down just a touch, and just get a tiny bit of red in there in places. Come across to the yellows, and a bit of those in there as well. Vary the tone just a touch across your beam but also looking at your other beams as well. Okay, I'm going to go to isolation mode now. See what the damage is, because there's not much down the bottom here. And I'm following the grain of the wood, of course, so sweeping strokes across my beam. Okay, and that's all fine. If you need to tidy up at all, you can use the smear brush here. Fairly big fairly high strength and just smear it out if you need to do any tidying up. Sometimes like at the end here needs a bit of tidying up. So I'm following the grain again. It's got a circular pattern at the end and it needs a bit of overlap at the end there. So that's a nice base and you might even be happy with that at this point. So you can use that in your game. I'm going to add a bit of detail though up to the draw brush. Get a nice light brush this time. Make my brush fairly small and some sweeping details like this, just gently. I've got a display tablet, which is nice and easy, but I'm using the pen pressure at the end here. So the lighter I press with my brush, the easier it is. Lots of people ask me if you can do this with a mouse. You can, but it's hard work. So there's some nice streaks there. Let's go dark. When I go dark, I tend to change the color as well. So move it across slightly maybe a deeper red, and that gives it more richness and vibrancy. That's great, let's start thinking about the ends now, so some circles at the end. I'll bring up the strength just a touch for this, so it's a bit more defined. You can be a little bit sketchy and rough. It does depend a bit on the style, that though. Now let's go to the light again. Might go even bright and get some highlights in there as well and go a bit more orangey. That's fine for the moment. Other end. To my darker colour. Can you notice that I'm not doing straight circles? I'm giving the illusion that there's bumps across this so just half a circle or quarter of a circle here and there and build it up. 
This one's a bit more orangey, so I'll give it a bit more yellow. And the other end, I might bring a bit more brightness out. Just keep checking so there's not too much variation. Now I'm going to sort out some highlights. So I'm going to change my brush to screen. And the screen brush lightens objects. Let me brush just a touch bigger around there. Make sure I've got a fairly light color. Not too high a strength. So delicate with this. And just go across your edges. And make them wobbly as well. So don't go straight lines. A bit more intensity in the corners where it's knocked up against things. I'm going over these strokes a lot because I've got a low strength, so I'm painting a lot on these. But I'd rather build up slowly than to lay down thick, detailed lines. That's just how I like to work. And you might want the occasional one coming out of the end as well. And we're getting there from a distance. It's looking quite nice. But there's still more work to be done. Let's draw in some real notches now. So let's go to the multiply. Change my color. More richness. A bit more saturation as well, actually. There we go. Now your notches, it's nice to go next to a line that's got some lightness. Hopefully that makes sense. You've got sort of a light part and a dark part in the middle. To the other end with the same thing. So again, I'm on a low strength and I build these things up slowly. Now to my screen brush for the lighter bits. Change the brush color and just give some lightness as if those bits have been weathered. So these bits that stick out and you're sort of creating your own ambient occlusion type thing. A bit more shading where you need it. You might want a bit of softness around the place. The wider you go with your stroke this is, the softer it's going to look. I've got very hard edges, this is a very low poly log, so you can really see the corners of my object, but when I draw the lines in it gives it that softness. And you'll probably see some of my pixels as well because it's a very low resolution. Other end. Add a bit of sort of curve to these as well so they don't just sharp point into each other, they curve round, and that again adds that sort of softness to your piece. You can use the screen brush around on the end as well. The ends are usually a little bit lighter. It's not looking too bad. I think perhaps just a bit more of a highlight on some angles. This is alright. This one here perhaps. What I find as well in Blender, it's helpful if you go onto the look dev mode. At the moment I've got my HDRI in the background. It's a very sort of neutral HDRI, but you can go to the viewport shading here, turn off the scene world, and then you get different HDRIs. You can just check what it's going to look like under different conditions. And you can see the different colors. It's looking fairly successful. The last bit, very last bit, with your screen brush, very fine. Just add a few minor details here and there. Then the multiply, back to that sort of rich color. You can put your brush strength up a fair bit now if you want to. You'll notice I haven't, just because I like to go over my lines a few times. I'm a bit more sketchy in the way I do things really. So I'm just going next to some of my highlights and then some of the dark areas just increasing that strength very slightly. And there we have it, a fine looking beam. Thanks for watching, do check out my website for more free courses just like this one. And do get across and check out the game Atlas Empires. 
Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.